In this video, as requested by you guys, I am going to share with you my one year experience using my in-home red light therapy device. I'm gonna show you guys some before and afters and take a look at some corresponding studies as well. So without further ado, let's dive into it. But you gotta focus. Just a quick background. When I'm talking about red light therapy, I'm specifically talking about red light and near infrared light around 850-ish nanometers and 660-ish nanometers. Now the red light therapy device that I have is a Mito Pro 1500. It uses those wavelengths and I always use both of them at the same time. It is thought that these light wavelengths stimulate the mitochondria and the cells and also stimulate like ATP production and essentially just stimulate recovery. But rather than getting into like the deep science, I'm just gonna get into the results and share with you guys what I experienced over this last year. So first, my protocol. When I first started out with the smaller red light therapy device that I had before, I was going upwards of 25 minutes a session trying to cover the quadrants of my body. Now, using this Pro device over the past several months, my red light therapy sessions have only been around three to five times a week, about 10 to 15 minutes with the occasional 20 minute session, like if I have an extra like minor injury or something that I wanna treat, and I'll get to that later in this video and share with you my experience on how I feel like this has helped me with certain injuries. Now, when it comes to my primary treatment zones, 90% of the time when I go to do a red light therapy session over the past several months, it's literally been five minutes from the back about right here in the middle all the way down to the ground. So this lower back half and then five minutes in the front, front half, a little bit above the belly button all the way down to the ground. And then the occasional five minute session on top of that, usually on the back upper half right here. Now I do know from previous videos in various B-roll, there's sometimes I'm sitting in front of the red light therapy device with it covering the upper half right here. I have to be honest with you guys and I'm sorry if that's been a little bit deceptive, but usually, that's rare. Like I'll do that just kind of here and there. And that's no specific reason other than I just feel like I want to treat these other zones more than the front half because I really find that this helps me with certain injuries and most of my injuries and aches have been in these regions that I've been treating. And I'm gonna get to my results with like injuries and stuff in a bit. But I just wanted to tell you the areas that I treat the most so that it can correspond with the results and help you with your analysis of, I guess, my results from this video. So let's dive into the results after a year of doing this. So the skin, scars, stretch marks, acne, wrinkles, blemishes, moles, cherry angiomas, etc. So for me, when it comes to things like moles, cherry angiomas, wrinkles, and even acne, I haven't experienced any significant differences. Now, once again, remember, I haven't done a lot of consistent treatment to the front upper half right here. It's been more in the front back half, the back lower, and the front lower. So for me, when it comes to blemishes on the face like that, I haven't noticed any difference. But now, regarding the back lower half, stretch marks, and scars. So for the longest time, I've had pretty bad stretch marks on the side of the hip right here. Now, before I started this red light endeavor, I took a picture of these stretch marks. And after a year of this red light therapy, check this out. Now, I did my best to keep everything consistent here, but obviously there could be some variation in lighting or the way it's presented, etc., that could be causing this difference. But I gotta be real, I mean, just by looking at this, it does look like there's some improvements. Now also keep in mind, I haven't been intentionally or directly treating this area with the red light. Like I said, it's from the back lower half and the front half. So this is on the side actually, So, but I assume it's still getting exposed. Now various studies I looked at have been showing a potential increase in collagen production using this red light therapy. Looking at this study right here, after 30 treatments of red light therapy, this is apparently an ultrasound of collagen production or collagen density. And it, I mean, it looks like there's more collagen. Just get, you know, I'll leave a link in the description to these studies um, so you can look at them yourself if you want to. So now regarding scars. So there's an area on me that got significantly chafed after doing a thousand sit-ups on the moist grass and that actually resulted in a scar on the upper part of my buttocks. Ew! Jeez, that looks terrible. Now that was lingering around for quite a few months until I started using this red light therapy device. And after just the first 10 days of using this, I noticed a significant reduction in that area when it comes to just like how 
contrast it looked compared to the rest of my skin in that area. And then just through treating this lower half consistently, I also secondarily treated that area over the next 100 days, I noticed a significant reduction in the visibility of this scar. And now after a year of doing this red light therapy, I had to say pretty much the scar, it's like just pretty much completely gone. I mean, if you got in there and you really looked, you might be able to see something, but please just take my word for it because I've tried to take pictures of this area and tried to like zoom in and clip in, but I, I just can't show that area here, all right? Now, is it a possibility that this would have healed up similar on its own? Perhaps, but it feels like too much of a coincidence. It seemed like it was sticking around and around to stay until I started using the red light device, then it seemed to get better. That's just how I feel. So what about just skin elasticity overall? I feel like my skin is just as elastic as it was before I started this, it's hard to tell. I don't feel like my skin has gotten any looser per se. However, looking at this, this is a back shot in an area that frequently gets treated, my lower back, right? You can see this mole corresponding to the other mole right here, these same shadows. I tried to mimic the lighting and the difference in color is I think I'm just a little bit more tan on the right here. There's a few marks missing. I think these were just maybe like acne that may or may not have been gone, whether I did the red light therapy device or not. However, to me, when I really look into this closely and I notice the skin right here, it seems like it's tighter in the afters right here. Like it's a more smooth, less like cottage cheesy looking skin. And also it does look like I may have a little bit more back hair in the afters. Could that be due to the stimulation from the red light or just maybe the cycle of life? I'm getting hairier each and every year. I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, that skin in the middle right here, that's something I was looking at. I'm like, looks like it might be a little tighter. What do you guys think? Moving on to hair results. This gets a little interesting. I was actually surprised myself. Looking at the before side profiles, this is the right side, before on the left, after on the right. Left side profile here, before, after. So personally, in my opinion, I'm not seeing any significant what looks like Oh my gosh, there's hair growth. It looks denser, thicker, anything like that. Pretty much the same, which actually might be a good thing, all right? No more regression in hairline. So, hey, but once again, remember, like I did mention, I really don't often do front upper half red light therapy consistently. I'll do it here and there, but it hasn't been as consistent as the other quadrants of the body. However, like I mentioned, I occasionally do the upper back half and check this out. So this is before on the left and after on the right. I don't know, it might look a little bit thicker and even like just more luscious in this after one right here. I tried to keep everything consistent from the lighting, the hair length, etc. cetera. I, like, it looks like it could be a little bit thicker in this after one right here. I don't know, what do you guys think looking at this? Like it looks pretty thick and pretty like just even and healthy on this after side right here. When I have been looking at most of the studies that show a positive impact on hair regrowth, it seems like they use wearable red light devices. Mito Red Light has actually just released their version of a wearable headset device. Maybe I should try to get my hands on one of those and wear one long term to see if we can increase density up here rather than me having to do like five minutes in the front, five minutes on the side, five minutes on the side, five minutes on the back, just for hair because it's like, that would just be like 20 minutes of pure head when I could just get a wearable device. Now you might be wondering, bro, didn't you have a wearable red light therapy device for your head? I thought I saw that in one of your other videos. I did for a little bit there, but I sold it. I don't know, should I consider reinvesting in one of those and trying that out for the next year or so and seeing what happens? Because yeah, I don't know. I don't know, what do you guys think? All right, moving on. Injuries, muscle recovery, and growth. Specifically for me, this is where I've noticed the most benefit from red light therapy. Over many years of v-boying, power moves, these gymnastics-like movements, and just like slamming myself into the ground, I've had acute and chronic injuries ranging from like the lower back just absolutely aching to the neck to the shoulder that one's pretty visible you can see it when i flex to the groin so that's a huge reason why i actually keep my red light sessions from the lower back upper back half and the lower front to treat the groin the lower back the neck 
the shoulder. But I've also experienced acute injuries here and there like on the knee, the ankle, the calf, muscle aches, etc. And now I have to say, when it comes to these acute annoying injuries, you know, the ones that pop up where it's like, oh, I kind of tweaked that and it's probably going to be about, you know, a week, 10 days before that goes away. Red light therapy seems to make that turnaround in like less than half the time. It's literally like two, three days at the most, what used to be like a seven to 10 day process of just like that nagging pain that just sticks around. So for me, this is like my best use from red light therapy. So what about chronic like deep injuries? Like for instance, my shoulder, I mean, that thing's kind of messed up. I do notice that if it ever is aching after a red light session, that aching pretty much seems to go away within like about like eight hours after the session. That's one more thing I should say. I don't notice that it just like, makes these injuries feel better immediately after every red light session, those micro injuries, but I feel like it's later in the day that they feel better. And if I didn't do the red light therapy session, then it would just continue to ache throughout the day. But yeah, regarding like the deep chronic injury, like the shoulder, I feel like if it ever is aching, it helps it with the aching going away. But when it comes to that deep healing, I can't say my shoulder's healed, all right? So I can't say like, wow, did red light therapy for a year and this thing is healed. No, it's definitely still messed up. So for me, when it comes to these minor, more like grade one strains, I feel like red light works phenomenal. But when it comes to these chronic, deeper injuries, I feel like it can help. But for me, it, it didn't absolutely heal the entire thing, let's just put it that way. Maybe over the long period of healing, it could speed that up. I just don't know, it's only been a year in that case. Now when it comes to like muscle recovery, soreness from the gym, I do feel like it helps as, as well. But overall fatigue to like the body, like if, if I fatigue myself, I don't feel like the red light therapy helps the fatigue go away. So it's not like I can just train super intensely every day. Does that make sense? But I do feel like it helps mitigate that soreness, that extreme soreness as well. Now muscle growth specifically, like I haven't noticed like all of a sudden I'm just absolutely huge or anything like that from doing red light therapy. But there have been a few studies looking at potential muscle recovery. Check this out, this is hilarious. Photobiomodulation in human muscle tissue and advantage in sports performance. Uh-oh. PBM or photobiomodulation or red light therapy can increase muscle mass gained after training and decrease inflammation and oxidative stress in muscle biopsies. And then check this out. We raise the question of whether photobiomodulation should be permitted in athletic competition by international regulatory authorities. As if they're gonna ban it because it's too much of a performance enhancer. Yeah, I don't know, you can look into this more. I think this is actually just a review on a bunch of various studies looking at how photobiomodulation can improve muscle healing, etc. But from my experience, I don't feel like it significantly helped me with muscle growth. But perhaps there is an all over systemic benefit that can benefit health, that can benefit muscle repair and growth, or perhaps there is a reduction of inflammation and an uptake in muscle protein synthesis somehow. For me, I'm just telling you right now, I don't feel like I got more muscular over the past year, but I do feel better in other ways, like I mentioned. Okay, what about sleep, cognition, mood, circadian rhythm, overall health, etc.? So for me, like I've mentioned in my previous red light review videos, when I do red light therapy on days where it's not sunny and I don't get enough sun exposure outside, I feel like it helps me set my circadian rhythm and um, I feel like it's easier for me to go to bed rather than on days, and yes, there's still days, even though I know when I don't do the red light therapy, I don't get outside or it's very cloudy outside, those days seem to be worse for me when it comes to going to sleep. For me, it seems to help substitute for that lack of sun exposure regarding circadian rhythm. Now, is it optimal for setting circadian rhythm? I don't know. Could it be more optimal if I had like a full spectrum, like mimicking sunlight light. From my experience though, when I do use it, when I don't get enough sun exposure outside or light outside, I feel like I do sleep just as well as if I did go outside that day. Hopefully that makes sense. I still don't sleep the absolute best. In fact, I still sleep pretty poor overall. That's something I do wanna improve going on, but that's a whole nother video, a whole nother topic. So cognition, mood, et cetera. So overall, day to day, do I feel like I'm just way more happy of a person, way more energetic of a person? I mean, it's hard to say since I started using this, but I do have to say every time, 
Every single time after I'm done doing a red light session, I've never been like, ugh, I can't believe I just did that. Like, that's so annoying. No, I've always been in a good mood after I've done a red light session. Looking at some of these studies, I've mentioned this one before, they showed the improvement of sleep quality with exposure to this red light. And then also looking at this other study, it found that there may be potential benefits in treating anxiety, depression-like symptoms with photobiomodulation. But I think they say that it needs to be looked at a little bit deeper. And weird bonus, digestion. Improvement in digestion. Specifically, sorry about this, but constipation. If I ever do feel like I'm kind of constipated, for some reason, I feel like if I just have a red light session, it helps with it. Like it helps get things moving. Not all the time, I'm not constipated all the time. I just mean like those times when I have been, I feel like it has helped. Whether it's maybe because it helps me relax or it's actually doing something on a deeper level. I don't know, that's just an observation I made. It seems to just get things moving sometimes. So in conclusion for me using red light therapy, I found the most benefit when it comes to treating those micro around like grade one strains. I noticed the faster recovery, it made me feel better. Now that plus the potential for it to potentially be stimulating healing on a deeper level is why I'm gonna continue using this from here on out. And secondary to that, looking at the studies and my results after this one year experience, there may be benefits to skin health, hair health, collagen production, scar reduction, etc. So I am going to continue red light therapy as I have been three to five times a week, about 10 to 15 minutes a session because I've been experiencing benefits like I've mentioned. With that being said, based on what I share with you and your curiosity, is there anything specifically maybe you'd wanna see me use it on for like the next year, like front of the hair or something I haven't been doing it on? Um, to see if there could be a, like a benefit in, in that way or another. But yeah, should I concentrate on another specific zone out of curiosity? Should I dedicate three to five times a week specifically on the face? Should I invest in one of those wearable head devices again for hair? Let me know what you guys think. And with that being said, huge shout out to Mito Red Light for sending me this Mito Pro 1500. It's a lot bigger, a lot more efficient than that other little one I was using beforehand. I am also now an affiliate with Mito. If you guys wanna check them out and or interested in purchasing a Mito Red Light, my affiliate link will be in the description. You should get a discount if you use it. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you all have a great day. If there's any more questions you wanna ask about this, feel free to leave them in the comments below. With that being said, more videos coming out. Stay tuned, don't forget to subscribe. I hope you all have a great day. Peace, I will see you all in the next video.